we have finally made it to the end of the boss guide playlist. I just wanted to say thank you to all the people that have stuck through all of the boss guides. What I decide to do from here on out regarding videos is kind of up in the air still. I enjoy making educational content, especially on Cuphead, and I do want to keep that theme going. But with only so many things to talk about regarding Cuphead, I am admittedly a little lost on how I should continue making content on this channel. I definitely plan on making a few more Cuphead videos, but for the long term future, I'm really not sure what I should be doing next. So here's my segue to ask you guys to comment anything that you would want to see on this channel. Now, to be honest, I'm a little picky on what content I want to create, because simply I'm not passionate about every single topic. But I also want to make sure that any content I do release is actually interesting to you guys. So please, feel free to leave any comments down below and I will surely read all of them. Any ideas are appreciated, and simply talking about what you would like to see on the channel would be very much appreciated as well. So without further ado, let's talk about S-Ranking Chef Saltbaker. Starting with your loadout, it'll honestly be easier to talk about what weapons not to bring rather than what you should bring. And to start, Pea Shooter is just way too inconsistent to be actually viable for this fight. With how each phase works, you will not be hitting nearly enough for it to be actually useful, which is also the same for Spread, Lobber, Charge, and Converge. You'd be way better off using a weapon that's good for the majority of the fight rather than just one phase or even two. Which is why I 100% recommend using either Crackshot or Chaser. And in this case, Chaser is actually the best pick for this situation. Chaser is your backup weapon and your go-to weapon if you can't hit directly with your other shot. It also really helps keeping your damage consistent throughout the entire fight or phase, which is very useful for this fight in particular. Getting past these phases is by far your top priority, which is why Chaser really helps for this. But enough about Chaser, your next and last weapon that I recommend you bring, albeit very repetitive, and I'm sorry I'm saying this again, but it should be Roundabout. When you're worrying about damage consistency for a boss like this, then it's very well worth bringing Roundabout and getting good at it. It's quite honestly pretty easy to hit, considering that when you're not even trying to hit something, you will probably hit something. It has great coverage across the entire screen, getting rid of the minions like the Animal Crackers and also hitting the Pepper Shakers very often in the second phase, which also leads to its EX being pretty easy to spam for this phase in particular. And other than the last phase, Roundabout hits very well and often enough to make up for any lost DPS in the scenarios that Spread and Charge would thrive. And above all, this weapon combo is simply the safest pick for this fight. Absolutely feel free to experiment with what weapons you want to use, but this weapon combo is personally my favorite and recommended loadout for the fight and it's what I'm going to be talking about. To finally move on to your super, I recommend using Invincibility or Shield Pal if you're using Ms. Chalice. Like for most S ranks, your health requirement is by far the most important requirement you must maintain. And it should go without saying that Invincibility and Shield Pal can help with this. And other than that, all of Miss Chalice's supers are actually pretty good here, especially Ghostly Barrage. So you should go with whatever you're comfortable with, although Shield Pal and Ghostly Barrage are clearly the best picks in my opinion. And finally, for your charm, there are a lot of good options for this fight. Like I've already hinted at, Miss Chalice is a great pick for this fight if you know how to use them correctly. Otherwise, Hearthring is the obvious pick to keep your health requirement, and Smoke Bomb is the obvious pick if you want to dodge anything in your way. It's really up to personal taste at this point in the game. And that should be it for your entire loadout, so let's talk about how to S-rank Chef Saltbaker. So, when I first enter this fight, I like to aim up at Chef Saltbaker to deal as much damage as possible. This will give you a great head start on damage since you want to finish this phase as fast as you can. This is by far one of the hardest phases in all of Cuphead and one of the most chaotic as well. So let's get straight into what his attacks are and how he performs them. During this phase, he'll use all the items you gathered for him from the bosses you defeated earlier. And all of these attacks take up a significant amount of the screen. We'll start with the sugar cubes. Around 8 sugar cubes will fly across the screen in a wave-like pattern, and at least 2 of these sugar cubes are parryable. I would recommend getting as many parries as you can since it would help with heart rank or for the parry requirement for the S rank. But other than using Miss Chalice or Smoke Bomb, there isn't any real easy way to counter this attack. You're simply going to have to get good at dodging these sugar cubes. Which, in my opinion, is not too hard considering how much space you have and the other attacks that can definitely get in your way. And a prime example of an annoying attack are the limes. Up to 5 limes can boomerang across the screen at different positions on the screen. Those positions namely being on the ground, right around chest height, and above your head. So you're gonna have to dodge a lot for this attack. Luckily, all these attacks aren't exactly the hardest to counter, it's just that you have to deal with all these attacks at once and counter them all at once. 
because the limes by themselves aren't very hard. You're either just ducking under them or jumping over them. But when you're combining this attack with something like sugar cubes, then the screen becomes a huge mess really fast. And this isn't made any easier with the gnome berries or the jumping flames. The gnome berries are easy. Around 16 of them will rain down from the top of the screen diagonally to the left side of the screen. And the jumping flames are exactly that. There will be two flames that will alternate jumping towards the player trying to hit them. And I haven't even talked about the animal crackers yet. These animal crackers will bounce from one side of the screen to the other, and at different paces and jump heights as well. But luckily, we can take these down with a few well-aimed shots with Roundabout. But other than that, you're really on your own countering all of these attacks at once. This is why we'll take advantage of the homing weapon we have to deal constant damage throughout the fight. And we'll also try to aim Roundabout at Chef Saltbaker directly to deal even more damage to him. You should have just under 5 super cards by the end of this phase, so that's a pretty good metric to measure just how long you've been in this phase. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention how he performs these attacks as well, because that is pretty relevant to how you want to fight him. Since Chef Saltbaker does move a lot during this phase, which also means his hitbox is constantly moving, it is pretty important to know when his hitbox is the most exposed for you to shoot at. And that typically happens between his attacks. And luckily for us, he has a pretty predictable pattern on how he'll perform each attack. From my observation, he'll always do one attack and then switch sides of the screen. And he'll pause for a slight moment before he goes on to his next attack. And considering that each of his attacks has a pretty long animation, you'll have a lot of time to deal damage to him directly. And the only exception to this rule is the Gnome Berry attack, which he'll kind of use as a transition between switching sides of the screen, which in turn makes this Gnome Berry attack in particular very easy to predict. So now that we know how Chef Saltbaker moves around during this phase, we can try to maximize our damage by aiming directly at him when we can. And just a couple of notes before we move on, you'll want to stay away from the sides of the screen since that's where most of the attacks come from. Also, be wary of the jumping flames, they can really get in your way for certain attacks and can cause you to get hit often. Make sure to switch to your homing weapon whenever you can since that'll be the main damage dealer for this phase in particular. And lastly, I heavily recommend you take out the animal crackers, they are really more of a nuisance than you might think, just trust me on this one, take them out. To be honest, I try not to use Miss Chalice to make any of these guides, but if you really want to, Miss Chalice is a great pick for this fight, especially if you're using the Shield Pal Super. It pretty much covers everything you'll need to use for this fight, so you might as well try using it if you want to. I will be leaving an unedited playthrough at the end of this video for anyone that wants to play alongside me or wants the live commentary for how I play during the middle of the fight. Hopefully that can give you some more insight on the fight or this phase in particular because you're really having to deal with all this on your own and there's not really much else to say, so let's move on to the second phase. You'll know if he's moved on to a second phase if he slams the table, puts a mushroom inside of his head, and scoops up the player. After, you'll be standing on his hand and four pepper shakers will spawn on each of the corners of the screen. From time to time, these pepper shakers can sneeze out a peppercorn that can sometimes be parried. And our goal is to take out these pepper shakers as fast as we can, since the length of this phase directly correlates with how many pepper shakers we take out. From my observations and research, you need to take out at least 13 pepper shakers before moving on to the next phase. The pepper shakers are actually surprisingly easy to take out since they have such little health. From my testing, each pepper shaker takes about 12 pea shooter shots before being launched at Chef Saltbaker, which is about 48 damage. So you can probably imagine how many weapons are pretty good for this phase. Nonetheless, Roundabout and our homing weapon are more than enough to take care of this phase easy peasy. It takes exactly 6 Roundabout shots to take care of one pepper shaker. And once you take out one of the bottom pepper shakers, the other shots shoot boomerang back towards the pepper shaker behind you, which essentially kills two birds with one stone. You honestly could do this for the rest of the phase, but it is a little bit slow and we do have openings to take care of the top pepper shakers. After taking out one of the bottom pepper shakers, you could stand in its place and aim up towards the top pepper shaker and that should usually take it out pretty fast. But enough about the pepper shakers, let's talk about the pineapple mint and the flames that remained during the first phase. With his new attack, he will toss up 3 to 5 mint leaves that will slowly fall down to the bottom of the screen. These leaves do sway a lot, so you have to be careful where you're standing if you're close to them. What actually makes this attack difficult are the flames that still remain from the first phase. Instead, this time, they'll be standing on the floor and they'll alternate jumping onto you. So you'll have to make sure you're moving constantly while this is going on. Miss Chalice and Smoke Bomb are obvious ways to counter this. And now the rest is up to you to get past this phase and move on to the third phase. You'll have to deal with these two saws on the floor since there are two different ways they'll spawn in. Either they'll spawn in facing each other moving forward, or they'll face against each other moving in the opposite directions. 
In both cases, you'll just want to find an open spot that you can hang around to bait where Chef Softbaker will land. That way, when he tries to land on top of you, you can simply dash away and avoid him altogether. Then you'll want to focus as much damage towards him as possible, since this phase is very short. He only has around 136 HP according to the wiki, so very easy to take down. Just try to aim your shots decently well during this phase and you should get past it in literally like 5 seconds. Yeah, he can jump a bit erratically and weird, but having good spacing and knowing when to pass by under him are key to beating this phase with no sweat. So with that said, let's move on to the last phase. You'll have to manage jumping to each of the fallen glass platforms. And these platforms can be pretty far from each other. Which is why I recommend saving your super for this phase, whether it's to deal damage to the heart or to keep your health requirement via invincibility or shield pal. You'll definitely want to parry the heart to cross big gaps or for the heart ring value or parry requirement. And of course, use only chaser for this phase since it shines here the most. Now it's up to you to outlast this phase and beat Chef Saltbaker. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing this video to help out the channel. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video. Okay, so when you start the fight, aim at Chef Salt Baker with Roundabout. We got some good damage in, 8.5 damage per shot. Awesome. Anytime you can't use Roundabout, you switch to Chaser. Makes you, lets you consistently do damage. Animal Crackers, I like to focus on getting rid of them. Otherwise, use Chaser. Roundabout for some direct damage when I can. Now I'm just kind of assessing all the threats and moving, moving as such. Switch so a chaser when I don't feel comfortable. No, those fu freaking fireballs be kind of annoying. Uh, the phase is close to being over. You should be going over right now. Boom. <coughs> Switch around under row preemptively. If you stand in the middle of the hand like this, you can try to hit both of the pepper shakers and take them both out at once, like so. Pretty good run so far. This might be it. Take this one out, go in its place, shoot with roundabout, rinse and repeat. Try to do some freaking parkour. Nah, no, okay, play safe, play safe with Chaser, stand in the middle. Oh! Not playing safe. <laughs> not playing safe. Oh god. Sorry, I got someone. <clears throat> I gotta clear my throat. Yeah, try to stand in a place where it's going to be like relatively empty. That's not really the case, but hey, see, it, it, it kind of jumped away from me, which is good. Oh, I'm going to take a damage. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We take we take the L, but we're going to take the double new win because we have four health still, half super. And we're about to beat this. We have a parry. Just keep on using Chaser for this whole phase. Let's pop super here. Not only will that fill the super mirror requirement, but maybe I can get an extra parry? No? I was hoping I can... Boom. There we go. Now I have even extra health. Boom, I got it. Right there. That's definitely the ass rank. That's why heart ring is so good. Like, I barely had to try. <laughs> like, I'm just using freaking Jacer. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, so... 207, good. Parry. Super. And bada bing bada boom. So there you go guys. Thank you for watching this far if you have. Uh, this didn't actually ta take that many tries. You know. Uh, it probably took maybe 10. 10 tries. But yeah. So um, thanks for watching. And um, I'll see you later.